Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about how to overclock your NVIDIA graphics card and use some tools inside of MSI Afterburner to give you an on-screen display of some crucial things like temperatures and usage for maybe your CPU and your GPU. So without further ado, let's get on to it. So one of the first things we need to do is we need to download both the benchmark as well as uh, MSI Afterburner. So um, let's open up your favorite web browser. And then for the benchmark, you're just going to type in uh, Heaven Benchmark. Okay. VN Benchmark. It's going to bring you to uh, their first link is their page. It's a free 247 megabyte download. Now, you will notice this is from 2009, so it's quite a few years old. But it still does a really good job. It's kind of stressing your system. And for some reason, their newer benchmarks crash my OBS. So for the sake of this video, I'll be using this benchmark. You can use just about any benchmark that you want, whether it's a 3D mark or um, like Superposition, which is their new benchmark that has a bunch of physics stuff in there as well. But really any kind of a benchmark that will stress your GPU to 100% is all you need. So new, old, doesn't really matter, just as long as it pushes your GPU um, to the limit. So now after you have the, uh, the Heaven benchmark downloaded, let's head over here and you're gonna look up MSI Afterburner and then the first link will be their page, give it a scroll down, you'll see Afterburner, and then you'll see you're already on the Downloads tab, and then Download Afterburner. Get both those downloaded and installed, and then once those are installed, you will open up your um, the Heaven Benchmark, and these things will be set to something a little bit different, but what you wanna do is uh, set your quality to Ultra, set your tessellation to Extreme, and I'll show you some of the settings you can change once the benchmark is running. Stereo 3D disabled, uh, multi-monitor disabled for this test anyway. Uh, Anti-aliasing, we'll set that to eight times. Uncheck the full screen box and then bring your resolution to custom. And you wanna make this slightly smaller than your, uh, your uh, native resolution. So my uh, native resolution is 2560 by 1440. So we're gonna roll a 2400 by 1200. It's gonna fill up most of the screen. It's gonna be enough to stress my video card. And that is the most important part. So, um, before we run this, uh, you guys are also gonna wanna open MSI Afterburner just to get it up and running, and it should look something like this. So before we even get started, we're gonna change a couple different things. You'll notice that here, the core voltage, you can't really do anything to it, but kind of drag the window around. Your power limit's at 100, uh, clock is zero, memory clock is zero, and fan speed is at auto. And most cards that um, have beefier coolers on them, I'm, I'm using the uh, Asus Strix GTX 1080, so it has it's a triple slot card, three fans on the cooler. Um, this should be probably be running at zero, um, unless you have a very hot room or you're you're just playing a game. And then, uh, so we're going to change some of these settings. So first thing you want to do is go into settings. And I believe I reset this, so I think I got this right, but. Uh, unlock voltage control, unlock voltage monitoring, and force constant voltage. Those three should be unchecked when you first install. So go ahead and then uh, check the install. And for here, uh, what I use is I typically use the extended MSI setting for unlock voltage control. I hit OK. It's going to ask me if I want to restart. Of course, give it just a second. It will restart the program, and then you may have to reopen it again. Boop. And now you'll see the core voltage uh, percent is here already set to plus 100 so we're good and then we can move on from there before we do anything else however go ahead and click on user define or the fan control the first time you click on that it's going to ask if you want to set a custom fan control click yes and that will take you over to this screen now once you're in the fan control screen if you go to default it'll probably look something about like this um, when you do enable user define, you should hear your fans turn on because the default setting in MSI Afterburner actually doesn't allow them to turn off. Uh, I do like that feature, so I do tend to keep it. Oh, and this is going to be at um, oops at uh, 100 ms as well on default. So now what you're going to want to do is this curve and how you set this up is completely up to you. It's a kind of a balance between noise and cooling. Typically, what I'll do um, if you click along the green line, you can add extra points. Um, and I'll have the fans stay completely off up to uh, 30 degrees. So what you have on the left side is your fan speed. And what you have on the bottom is your temp. So at 30 degrees, it's at zero, um, zero percent. And then uh, at 30 degrees, I'll kick this up uh, actually to um, 35%. And then I'll let this thing roll up to 60 degrees to uh, 50%. 
and then up to uh, 70 degrees we'll kick it to 70 percent and then at 75 i'll spike that thing all the way to 100 percent now what this does is if i'm sitting here kind of like this not using the gpu the fans are off i can't hear anything and that's fine because it's it's staying nice and cool uh and then once i roll into um games and stuff and then the temperature tends to kick up and then the fan will turn on so we'll set that um it is a little warm in here today so it looks like we are sitting at about 41 percent fan but honestly i can't even hear it even though the pc is right here next to me now once you have the baseline fan set you've unlocked voltage control voltage monitoring and all that fun stuff go back into the benchmark and just click on run so this is going to start up the benchmark give it a minute to load and then what it's going to do is it's going to start to really stress uh, your gpu pretty heavily move this over here you guys can see everything and you can see with everything kind of maxed out I'm at like 50 fps and this is on a 7700k at 5 gigahertz and a gtx 1080 so it's pretty crazy so what i'll actually do for this just to keep frame rate up i'm going to disable tessellation we should still sit at 98 to 99 percent gpu usage and now the frame rate is up it's running quite a bit smoother so we'll leave it at that uh for now um you can go in here if you want to leave this enabled and you can turn the scale way down which will essentially turn down tessellation and the lower you go um it should start to give your frame rate back you can get really crazy with tessellation on some of these things um and it'll go pretty crazy as far as how uh, tessellated uh, the geo is you can kind of see the stuff changing as i'm moving the slider um, but for now we'll just kind of leave this off to make sure the frame rate stays nice and smooth for the video uh, some of the other settings do live here if you want to adjust aa or ao shadows refraction all kind of fun stuff but just remember if you do change these there is a chance the benchmark will need to uh, restart uh, some of the other cool features about the benchmark is you can click on camera and go to free uh, when you go to free cam, essentially this thing is just going to kind of float around. Uh, you can look around uh, with left click and then fly around if you find a place that you want to just kind of hang out at and look. Um, which is pretty nice. And then you can kind of change some of the focus stuff. Uh, some of the other camera stuff. It felt like I was falling for a second there, but that island is actually sitting there and it's literally floating up and down. Uh, and then you can go to environment and you can change time of day as well. So you can have this kind of set on whatever time of day. Uh, you want and sometimes i'll set these to whatever i can find is the most stressful on the gpu um but yeah and so it's kind of cool all the dynamic lights and stuff will come on so if you wanted to come down uh to the city uh, and you can kind of see all the lights lit up i know this dragon in the in the center of the city actually does look pretty cool uh, especially once you if you go back to tessellation and kind of pop that up we'll enable it looks pretty nutty that's pretty cool the the the, uh, the tech but anyway so for now we'll go back to cinematic this thing's going to do its thing it's going to run its uh, predetermined scenes and just continually stress um the gpu so now what you're going to do is you're going to go back into msi afterburner you want to uh, set your power limit up to as far as it'll go uh, my card will go to 120 some cards may only go to 110 some may only go to 105 i think some go to 109 but looking to go to uh, essentially up to 120 and then uh, from there, you're going to start with your core clock and increase it in increments of 10. Hit apply. Let it sit for about maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds. As long as everything seems good, go back to it. Go up another 10. Hit apply. This is a very slow process. You can go in bigger chunks if you want. The issue is you want to find as far as you can go before you hit instability because then you roll back from instability by about 7 to 10%. And that should be stable enough to get you through just about any game. So I know that my video card will go to 155 on the core so now we go down to the memory clock and now typically memory will overclock much more than the uh, the core clock will so i typically do these in increments of plus 25 once that's settled go to plus 50 and what you're looking for for this one memory shouldn't technically crash the benchmark it can but what you'll actually get is you'll get artifacting which will be small like black pink dots kind of all over the picture um, where the memory can't keep up with the gpu uh, and uh, in that case, then you pull it back a little bit until the image is clear again. Uh, in this one, I know I can go to plus 600 on the memory. And then if you scroll down here, you can kind of take a look uh, to make sure that everything is scrolling up. So right here, you'll see that we were at 1600 on the core. And now we're at uh, 2063. Uh, memory uh, the same. 
tooltips please get out of here um now we're at 5100 on the memory where before we were chilling at 4500 on the memory so we know the overclock worked um and then uh and then yeah so do, you want to let this sit for about 25 minutes once you have it where you feel is solid let it do its thing let it roll and uh, as long as you make it through about a half an hour then you should be good to go now up next is this on-screen display that we see in the, in the in the top right so when you install MSI Afterburner, it's going to ask you, do you want to also install Riva Tuna Statistics Server? Uh, it, yes. And so once you install um, that statistics server, what you can do is you can go into settings, you can go into monitoring, and then when you turn these things on here, so for example, I'll just turn off the GPU temperature, show an on-screen display, I hit OK, and my temp just disappeared. It was right there uh, above the memory. And then we go back into settings and we can select show an on-screen display hit okay and now boop, it just showed up again now in order to kind of adjust how this looks what you're going to do is in your um in your tray you're going to find the uh reva tuna statistics center icon it's a looks like a little a little monitor with a pink number 60 in the corner it's going to bring up this and then you have a few set a uh, few settings in here that you can adjust the on-screen display shadow will make it so you can see it much easier. Uh, right now you can see how without the shadow it kind of blends into the background. So I turn the shadow on and then you have your color palettes about like what color you want the numbers to be. You have the zoom which is essentially how big or how little the, uh, the overlay is on your screen. And then down here is the uh, position. So this will start 1-1. One, one. The overlay itself will be in the top left hand corner of your screen. I kind of find that if I put it almost all the way over to the right, but not really um, for most games, that area of the HUD is usually pretty empty and therefore makes a nice little home for what I want to see from my, um, my overlay. And then once that's set, you really don't ever need to touch that again. You can kind of go into here and, and add as much or as little as you want. Some people are just looking for a frame rate or some people just want to see their temperatures. Um, I kind of nerd out on a lot of the stuff, so I kind of run a whole bunch of things. We, I've got my GPU temperature, my usage, my clock speed, um, the power rating, the volts that are going to the GPU itself. Uh, this is how much VRAM I'm using off my video card. And then the CPU temperature, usage, and clock rate. How much uh, system RAM I'm using. And then, of course, my frame rate. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is kind of how you're going to do uh, a setup for a uh, NVIDIA video card to um, overclock it through MSI uh, Afterburner and stability test it using the uh, the Heaven benchmark uh, that you can find on the websites we talked about earlier. The links for these will also be down in the description below. Um, hopefully you guys found this informative. Hopefully um, I answered uh, some questions. We get a lot of these questions in the stream. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so uh, thanks for spending a few minutes here with me today. Remember, my dudes, be excellent to each other. We're all we've got. And until next time, take care. Peace.